Hello viewers, I'm SB and welcome back to Endless Legend, where today we are starting a new game as the Cultists of the Eternal End, because that is what people wanted to see, because apparently everybody just wants to watch SB suffer. Now, I've been, I've been talking about how I have a hard time with the Cultists, I'm probably overstating things a little bit. They're not a bad faction, they're not a weak faction, they're just tricky, and until you get yourself established, pretty fragile. So we're going to have to be very, very careful in the early game. Uh, this strange cult is led by two creations that are remnants of the Endless. The Queen, imprisoned within her indestructible throne in the capital city, and the Unspoken, a wandering and perhaps insane being of enormous power. Left alone on the planet for millennia, they have turned against their creators and sworn to destroy every trace of their existence. To do so, they recruit, train, and arm lesser beings from the tribes and vagrants that live scattered across the surface of Auriga. Regardless of where they are or to whom they have previously sworn allegiance, when a tribe turns to, to the cult, it does so until its death. Monolithic, fanatic, and ever-expanding, the Cult of the Eternal End will spare no effort, cost, or sacrifice to see that its will is done. I don't know exactly how much I've talked about the sort of the background lore of the Endless in this series, but the Endless were a very, very technologically advanced race. All of Ariga was basically a uh, biological laboratory. Uh, so one day they just up and disappeared as a result of a great cataclysm that was caused by an internal uh, civil war within the Endless. And so that's why things on Ariga are sometimes kind of futuristic seeming and sometimes kind of fantasy seeming. It's just that uh, any sufficiently advanced technology is indistinguishable from magic sort of thing. Um, so as far as I can tell, the Queen is an AI imprisoned within her indestructible server cluster in the capital city. I think that's what's going on with these guys. Uh, and then a lot of them are, you know, they just build new endless and or build new cultists and inject the AI into them necessary for them to function. And they're super creepy, just really, really creepy. So the deal with this faction is that they are a one city sort of thing, a one city challenge. No settler production, we get one settler at the beginning of the game and that is it. We get plus one district level cap on our cities, which means that our, our districts can be level three. Um, in order to make a district level three, it has to be surrounded on four sides by level two districts. So if we stick to our normal city building shapes, it will have a bunch of level three districts without having to think very hard about it. This is not a, uh, this is basically just the district level cap thing is all benefit for no effort. Which is good, because things are going to be tough for us, we need some benefit. Our Dust Eclipse effect is Worshipper's Frenzy, plus 10% attack, damage, defense, and life per city center level on our Minor Faction units during the Dust Eclipse. A lot of our army is going to be made up of Minor Faction units, um, so eventually this is plus 30% to all of the important stats for the duration of the Dust Eclipse. Honestly, I still think this is pretty weak relative to um, some of the Dust Eclipse effects we've seen on the other factions. In particular, I'm thinking of the Necrophages. But, you know, what are you going to do? It can't. We, they can't all be winners, I guess. We have the ability to convert pacified villages. So uh, the way this works is we spend some influence, and then the village becomes almost like a district for us. It gathers the resources on the tile that it's on and the six surrounding tiles. It will um, leech strategic and luxury resources out of its region, not just out of those six tiles, but out of its region. Uh, for us to have, and it will sometimes, it will, it says here regularly, maybe a little less often than I would like, spawn a unit of the village's race. Unfortunately, those units cannot be retrofitted and are wearing just the basic, the basic non-strategic gear that you have available, whatever the most modern stuff you have available is. So, like, if you're in Era 3, they'll be completely kitted out with um, Tier 3 iron uh, armor and weapons. They're pretty bad units. In numbers, they can overwhelm garrisons, although the AI does have a tendency to try to keep a lot of units in its garrisons, so maybe that won't even be the case for us. Um, you can sell them on the market, so they'll, they'll be worth some money at least. Oh, and each converted village counts as like a fifth of a city for the purpose of increasing the cost of the Empire plan, so it won't always be a super, super cheap Empire plan. We have the Walls of Faith, which just means our main city is tougher and has more militia in it. 
Obviously, that's pretty important, because if we ever lose our main city, we immediately lose the game. Uh, any city we capture is immediately burned to the ground, and we get an industry stockpile for each point of population that was in that city. We haven't talked about stockpiles at all yet, but they're just a, a one-time boost of a particular resource that can be applied to a city. So if we get an industry stockpile, we can just pick a city with it, obviously it will be our capital, and just dump somewhere between 100 and 1600 industry into it, depending on our level of stockpile technology. Uh, we will eventually unlock the ability to also get a science stockpile for each uh, population point in a raised city, and uh, some other stuff, plus extra XP on those converted units, which will not make them good at all. This tech feels pretty, uh, pretty not great to me. Uh, our military units, we don't actually get settlers. We just have the one that we start with. Uh, the Preacher here, this is our basic military unit, the one we can build at the beginning of the game. It is possibly the worst unit in the entire game. It is a support unit, so it's not really intended to be great at fighting, but even among support units, this one is pretty bad. Uh, low attack, low damage, bad defense, extremely low health. And the Unleashed Potential buff is just plus 10% stats on the unit you cast it on, so it's not even like a very good buff. These guys are terrible. However, you do actually have to have a Preacher, or you do actually have to have a Cultist unit in an army in order for that army to convert cities, or convert minor faction villages. So we will have to have some Preachers at the beginning of the game, but we will transition away from them quickly. As our armies start to get more powerful, the value of a 10% boost to the stats of our units does go up a little bit, but honestly, it's hard for me to imagine a situation where it's better for me to build a Preacher than it would be for me to just build another one of our good units. I don't know. We'll see. Maybe maybe I'm under undervaluing these guys, but they seem really terrible to me. Uh, the Fanatic, which we saw a few of it at the end of the last game, is a weird sort of cavalry unit. You might notice that it does not have any of the charge capacities that cavalry usually have. So, it's... Among cavalry units, it's uniquely bad at actually killing enemy archer and support units. But, it is still a fast-moving unit that can get behind enemy lines, cause morale problems for enemy ranged units, and um, effectively steal their turn by making them counterattack. So, it, it, I mean, it's definitely still useful. Finally, we have the Nameless Guard. This is the only default cultist unit that is any good at all, but fortunately, it's really good. The Nameless Guard might be the best ranged unit in the game. Uh, you can see there, base attack 55, base damage 32, uh, pretty standard archer stuff beyond that, you know, range 3, whatever. Um, we will get a, a an accessory at some point during our faction quest that can only be worn by actual cultist units that uh, significantly boost, boost their stats, and Nameless Guard with those on are just awesome. They're just really, really fantastic units. So we will definitely be using quite a few of these guys. We are going to be turning to minor factions to fill the other gaps in our army. Because, like I said, our, our other units are real bad. And with that, I guess, let's get going here. So pretty much the same game settings as always. Uh, I thought about... Leader Enemy Boss suggested that I've... That Given the way that I feel about Shared Victory, maybe I should just turn Shared Victories off um, so as to not basically manipulate the AI the way we did in the last game. I think that there might be something to that, but I'm going to leave the Shared Victories on for right now because, like I said, I'm anticipating having trouble here, and I just want to give myself every leg up I can get. I don't know why I've always had so much trouble with the Cultists, but I find them very, very difficult. I've read um, people say that they think the Cultists are actually very powerful or like one of the easier factions to to play and actually get like internal victory types with and i can kind of see where they're coming from in that everything you build buffs your entire uh empire's output and everything but i have i have always just had really bad experiences with these guys so um don't necessarily expect that this game is going to be a win we may lose a couple on our way to figuring out what the right way to play these guys in the Endless Legend community patch is. That's not a big deal. There's nothing wrong with failure. In fact, failure is educational. Failure is instructive. I think, in general, it is better for you to fail at things than it is for you to succeed at things. 
provided that failing at those things does not uh, incur some sort of very serious penalty like losing your home or something. Uh, unfortunately, uh, that makes this principle difficult to apply in real life sometimes. But in games, generally speaking, I think it's better for you to fail than it is for you to succeed. You learn a lot more, certainly. broke us when they broke themselves. Now we are few, and many that remain are of little use. Yet our purpose still drives us. Even death cannot be allowed to stop us. We must find new converts, new servants, who will help us fulfill the great oaths we took so long ago. They will not only be our hands and our eyes, they will be the sword and the shield of our armies that will bring the eternal end. First upon Oraga, and then across the universe. Alright, what do we got here? Okay, this is, uh, this is promising. I don't love the fact that we're starting right on another player's border, but I do like Cluster of Anomalies near the coast. Oh, let's uh, create that turn one save, in case people want to play along, and search our ruin right here. Okay, not a great start. A little bit ominous there. Uh, for some reason, we're getting the faction introductions, despite the fact that I have definitely played these guys before. So, it is always important to search your ruins, any ruin you can search in your home region before settling. Okay, yep, so I'll just coast over there. Um, but with any faction that starts with the language square tech, you also want to try to talk to your minor faction before settling. And for the same reason, sometimes the minor faction will give you a quest that will ask you to settle in a region. Not, uh, we are not so lucky here. But sometimes you can get a real easy pacification off of that. Alright, so where exactly do we want to put down? I think I'm going to run the hero off this way. It is hard uh, to overstate how not happy I am about the fact that we're starting pushed up against the seawall by another player, but it's less bad for us than it would be for most factions, since we don't have to think about um, expansion possibilities. So is this... Okay, this is ocean. We are on the actual coast. Yeah, that's promising. We can we can work with that. 14.6.11.4 is... Ooh, with 10 approval. That's actually like a pretty good start. I think I like the 146114 better than the 17287. The extra food is nice, but that is just it's too little industry. Yeah, this is not bad. We may be able to make something out of this, and I love starting on the coast. So we may as well turn off the resource view now because we will never again need to know what resources a tile produces. Oh yeah, I guess we could do some. You know, some minor selecting of technologies and buildings. Uh, so obviously we're going to need our mill foundry quite badly. Our deeds are be the first to have at least 30 units of one resource in order to get 30, uh, 100, excuse me, 130 wine, which is fine. And be the first to destroy 10, 10 armies in order to get tactical training, which we will not be able to do. So pretty bad luck there. Certainly need our founder's memorial. If I move off of food, no. If I move off of food, we're going to cost ourselves a citizen. I'm going to stick to food for the moment. I'm hoping we'll be able to just buy out the um, the Founder's Memorial, because it actually has a very cheap dust cost. If we can't get a little bit lucky here. All right, 30 more dust. Good start. Not really sure where exactly I want to go from here. Hold on. Let's look around with our other guys first. Now, I am noticing uh, that we have a cove position here where we could potentially level up a cargo dock. So we might want to try to expand this way before getting cargo docks. Leveling up a cargo dock is a pretty, uh, pretty powerful thing. Let's have you pop in here and we'll have a chat with these guys. Give them eight spices. I will not be doing that, obviously. Uh, oh, yeah, yes. Yeah. So the, the Cult of the Eternal End plot is told from two perspectives, the the cult and then a person that has been conscripted, we could maybe say, if we were trying to be gentle about it. Uh, it's a little bit like the narrative structure of the um, Umbral Choir story in Endless Space 2. 
The conversion begins, but the task is formidable. Few of those we attract are worthy, and even those must be trained. It would be convenient if more survived the training, but the unspoken insists on rigor. We will follow one of these. Perhaps we can learn from it. In the journal of the... This guy, who unfortunately has joined the cult against his will. It came with machines and troops, and we saw that our weapons were nothing. Our armor, tools, fences, walls... useless. It was cold and terrifying. It preached and promised, as all the powerful ones do. But this was different. These cultists want to convert, invade the old places, and cover the world with their believers. Who is insane enough to dream of ruling a world? This cult, it told us about a vengeance of centuries and asked us to join their terrible purpose. I looked right and left to see my people groveling. Their weakness angered me. I did not bow or grovel, I fought back and refused. And that thing, that metal monster, broke my weapon and broke my legs and threw me into a pit. And then, it began speaking to me. We have to train these savages, savages into the purpose of the cults, so we can start by converting to minor faction villages. Um, it is worth noting that if you convert a village in another player's region, the village uh, does not serve them, they do not get the population from it anymore. So anytime we do that, we should expect them to immediately reconvert it with violence. Uh, if we were to convert this village, we would not be able to hold it. Once we have an army, it's a little bit of a different story, maybe. So, I guess we're going to have this guy run down here then. I'm trying to figure out if it was going to be worth it for him to go south or if he needed to go east. And I'm a little torn on whether I want to meet Pink or not. Uh, let's see, that architecture speaks to me of Broken Lords, I think? Weird, we can see the, uh, the decorations on the edge of their city center, but not the city center itself. So, I don't really want to meet them. We can't do too much about it if they send some units over in this direction. They're going to meet us against our will. But we want to hold that off for as long as possible, because they can't declare war on us until after they meet us. Alright, so 118. We're going to see like 15 dust come off of this every turn. With next turn's ruin searches, we might be able to just buy that out then, and then immediately be able to start on the mill foundry. Boy oh boy, do we need industry. Alright, so there's a lot of lava around us. Two lava regions right next to each other. Or volcanic regions, I suppose. Okay, five glass steel. What did you guys want? You wanted eight glass steel. Well, that's an inconvenient amount. What's wrong with you? Got ourselves a relic of the past. Uh, well, that seems unlikely to be searchable by us. Maybe we could loop around here, but doing that without getting killed by pink seems... Like a little bit of a pipe dream. Yeah, alright, not a phenomenal start. So if we don't get any dust, we're not going to be able to buy out the Founder's Memorial next turn. But we'll be able to buy it out the turn after that. Wouldn't be the end of the world if we had to wait that long. They would like 50 dust. Well, I really can't spare 50 dust right now, I don't think. They would like me to destroy a Sisters of Mercy village in Matanch. Matanch. Okay, so that's this region. Well, I suppose that is what we shall do. Not that hard to find, or it's not that hard to beat Sisters of Mercy in combat. They're pretty bad at fighting. We gotta get some villages pacified if we want to convert them. Uh, also, we should talk about our hero real quick. So this is going to be a governor. Um, the cultist skill tree is, by a large margin, the best governor skill tree for almost every possible purpose. As long as you can guarantee that they're going to get to a reasonably high level. Um, there's certainly something to be said for the Wild Walkers and the amount of industry you get out of it, which is, really is just huge. But uh, this is very, very powerful. And he has Influence Boost 2, which is going to be pretty valuable for us. Influence is going to be something we're constantly starved for through the early game. 
And his only army capacity is health boost 2, which literally everybody gets access to. Um, granted, not until you hit era 5, but without you having to do any research or anything, so I don't consider that to be a particularly great one. Sure, research. Uh, so there's a couple of things that we're going to need. First of all, 6 to 26 turns from now, we're going to hit winter. It might be worth it to pick up cultivation, but I'm thinking we want to go for sewers next, because with a sewer up, we will be permanently ecstatic. And it's hard to imagine that that's the wrong way to go. After we get sewers, honestly, I might go for ships. Ships are really powerful. And then the question is, like, do we want to get onto industry focus? We really do want to get that mill foundry done. Yeah, let's go ahead and do that. Okay, the Eyeless One's Village got destroyed. Found ourselves 10 wine. Well, we may as well throw the wine down, right? Go ahead and become fervent right now. And then we'll be able to hold it for a really long time. Oh, there's another player right there. Man, we are... We are right up on top of everybody, huh? Oh hey, dust. Remember when ruins used to contain dust sometimes? Okay, roving clans. So they can't declare war on us, at least. I'd be lying if I said I was overjoyed to see them, though. Yeah, I guess I'd rather they be they be broken um, roving clans than any other faction. I'm just gonna flee here because they will definitely attack us out in the open, and the dervish is not a great unit, but the preacher is uniquely terrible. Okay, seventy more dust is extremely welcome. Alright, here's that village we need to destroy. Should be pretty easy, actually. I almost don't even want to bring the Preacher in, because I'm afraid he'll die. Ah, oh, whatever. We'll manage his position carefully. Boy, I wish I knew which reinforcement space he was going to come in. This guy up here... I mean, I, I want the defense bonus from standing in the trees. Okay, if our dude came in over there, it could be a... A little bit annoying. So you want to move as far as possible before casting your buff. Try to minimize the odds that a sister is going to come over here and kill me. And you can see our hero is uh, quite a bit better than these guys are at fighting. You... You suck. You couldn't, you couldn't get nine damage through? And see there, he did 9 just to mock me. Yeah, the Unleashed Potential buff only lasts for 3 turns, so we had to recast it there. It really is terrible. A lot of those buff abilities are not great, but this one is... This one's really bad. Alright, return to the tribe's village to restore their trust. Well, there are dervishes over there. Dervishes that might destroy the village, actually, which would be really annoying. And we are definitely going to pop this spices, though. An awful lot of food right now. You can definitely use that multiplier. If we were to get the 15 glass deal here, we could come home and pacify the silix, and that would be really, really nice. Like, how many levels do we want on End on the Seer before we pull him back? The Will of Achilles is... Man, Will of Achilles is powerful. That's a, that's a pretty good skill. Do we want to go straight to boats? I probably want to get cultivation. With potentially this much time until winter, I think it would be a good idea for us to try to get that food boost. I think what I might do here is wait until we're one turn away from finishing the mill foundry and then warp him back to get the XP. 
Come on, please don't let those dervishes destroy that village. Oh, they're, well, they're going to attack us. That's not as bad. If they keep moving, yes. If they keep moving, we'll get to go and turn in the quest. All right. Hey, not everything has gone super poorly for us. Got ourselves some more dust, which I'm pretty happy to see. So once, once these guys are pacified, we can start to talk about conversion. I'm a little worried with them being right on another player's border that um, they're just going to get deconverted, you know, via violence, probably right away. But we got to move our faction quest forward at least. Our faction quest gives us some pretty powerful stuff. We definitely do care about progress in it. We'll send him up here. You gotta run. You gotta run. Ah, no. Ah, that's super bad. Oh, I am in their territory, aren't I? Okay. I'm gonna head off the settler. This is the price they pay. I still might be able to go do this with this preacher. He's gotta he's gotta move to like here. I wanna let them enter the region and then attack them. I could also warp our hero back and have him Yeah, I don't know. Alright, is there any version of this where I can hide well enough that they can't kill me? No. They're very fast. Yep, yeah, he gets up on me right away. Well, forgetting to mash the button. That might have some uh, some serious consequences. And I don't really want to stop the build on the mill foundry here. Like This is pretty important, but we want to search the ruins. I guess we're going to wait a little bit on bringing the hero back. You better go the other way. <sighs> Nothing, huh? Well, that's cool. Boy, they're just going to uh, hunt me to the end of my days here. So now we have to consider something. If I warp the hero back onto this creature... We probably will not get attacked, or rather, if we get attacked, I will kill them. And in fact, I might attack them intentionally. But if I do that, then I'm locked out of putting the hero back in the city for five turns. Yeah, we got it. We have to be able to get over there and talk to that village. I'm just going to attack them. And I'm the seer can take those two, no doubt. So the wounded one goes first. Okay, he'll just he'll just die here. That guy goes after. Oh, really? I assumed he would go after the preacher when he moved in like that. Okay, there's the attack of the preacher. He fails to deal any damage. Now he is in open flight, which apparently is totally going to work. Well, that's annoying. Leave my preacher alone. Zero. Come on. He has 46 defense. Just kill him. Okay. Good. Better than you deserve, frankly. Alright. Well, we've uh, we've certainly hurt Green's progress. Get over here and get some more XP on our hero. Now I'm kind of thinking, uh, is now the time for boats? We want to get We want to get ships as early as possible. And after that, we probably have to get basic science stuff. I don't want to just buy the seed storage. Because winter could start any moment now, right? The faster we get this going, the better. But also, what if I save the money for purchasing a boat? I think I'm going to do that. Because we're going to get through it pretty quickly, right? In the basics of our city established here.
I wonder if it would be a good idea for us to pull back onto food. We probably want to, I guess we want to finish the seed storage before we do something like that. And I can't make that birth faster without slowing down the seed storage. Let's, let's just get this done. A little bit of sloppy play here that hopefully won't end up costing us too, too much in the long run. You're going to be like, aggression during Cold War. I did the same thing to you, but when I did it, it was fine. Because it didn't negatively affect me. Alright, well, we got our glass steel. So it's going to be 21 uh, influence to convert this village. We are going to do it, but I'm not super happy about it. We just got to, you know, we got to get this faction quest rolling because it does matter. It's going to prevent us from being able to get a an empire plan. Well, no, maybe it, it's probably not actually because right, we're going to reassign him. He's going to provide extra influence. It'll be fine. How close is he to leveling up? Okay, not that far off, actually. Let's get 6 XP for converting this village. And when we do that, we immediately get a unit. So now this village has a drider. Uh, I'm going to pop the drider out and send it off to search this ruin. If the, uh, if the AI were to show up and attack the village while it's empty, they'll just destroy it. But if they attack it while it's just containing our drider... They will destroy it and the drider. There's no way one of these things survives the combat with any enemy units. But we're certainly going to want to get our husbandry center established at some point here. Do I want to build units first or maybe like the first burrow? First burrow gets us a fair amount of additional stuff. Six three two two five. Hmm. Well, uh, like I said, we probably want to build this way so that we can have some chance of getting our cargo dock into the best spot. We could use the extra science. We maybe want to build defenses first. Actually, we still haven't met Pink, and we build the defenses so quickly. No, let's let's do this and let's. Food focus, to keep the population growth going as effectively as possible here. Turn in this glass steel before they can spawn any minor factions. What do we get? Okay, produce 40 science in one of your cities to get thing. Okay. Yep. So the way that the way that the relationship between green and pink unfolds is going to have a really really large effect on our outcomes here. But we are all the way trapped too. This sucks. <laughs> I don't know how we're going to survive. Well, I don't know that there's much point in having this guy sit out here. He's just, he should just come home. Uh, but here to show you, this is the all of the exploitation that we're sending home. Are we actually, we are sending this all home, right? This is how this works? I don't know, man. In 14 turns, we're going to get another Saratan. It is uh, a bad unit. But we'll bring them home. We'll set them in the garrison. They can at least make the city look real tough. And I mean, like, volcanic regions are good places to convert villages. Like, we get to bring home an awful lot of extra stuff. So your thing is up. Okay, it's up right now, but I'm going to have him... Talk to the Silix first. A little bit more XP. And yeah, we'll be able to get one tier one Empire plan, I think. Alright, so now let's snap you back over here. We did it! Hooray! The wine has ended. And we're still fervent thanks to the sewer that we built while the wine was running. So we are on seven points of influence per turn now, thanks to that extra level. Is going to make it very easy for us to get a faction quest. Or a, uh, a faction, an empire plan. And then I suppose... 48, huh? Well, 
I suppose we should move back toward this village? Maybe? Merge the Drider and this guy together to give him a little bit of defense? Man, maybe that's not even worth doing. That's a pair of units that's so bad at fighting, maybe we're just better off putting the Drider in the garrison. Spices are out as well. We've managed to do pretty well on food here. Boats. Right. We're going to do boats. So 196 buys out a boat. Which means that if we make almost any changes to it, it's going to get too expensive, right? Yeah, let's just... We just want to get something on the water moving as fast as it can, as it can move. So we're going to need a cultist unit to actually... Uh, cause the conversion to happen. Let's see exactly what we got out here. There is real weather. Man, which way do I want to go? This is all actual ocean, right? It's all it's all saying okay, yeah, this is actual ocean tiles. I can't tell... Yeah, I can't tell where I think there's more likely to be a sea region that actually matters. Let's go this way. Okay, well there's our first fortress. Hello, Fomorians. Gain the loyalty of the listening post in Gunley, located and captured the Manufactorium in Methanir. So this is the first time in this series that we've really done some, any ocean stuff, uh, I believe. I think so. The fortresses are very powerful, but it's not always convenient to get ship technology. You can talk to them as long as you have Language Square. The Fomorians who live in them are just, you know, another minor faction living out in the world, except they all live on the water. So what is the deal with these guys? The strange golems that inhabit or operate this fortress are in dire need of their flux inversed phlogiston ratchet. Without it, they cannot keep the fortress running according to the dictates of their traditions. It was stolen from them by the opportunistic inhabitants of another fortress. Over time, the fortresses became isolated, and it degenerated into every Fomorian for itself. To bring it back, you will not merely be a friend, but a savior. Well, Manufactorium in Mathanir. That's a shame, I don't have any idea where that is. And you did not? Yeah, they didn't tell us. Okay, just out of luck on that one. Oh, hey, it's, uh, it's green. We might want to turn around. Well, maybe we can convert this village instead? We're definitely going to just push up to the, uh, the higher level skills with Andom. It doesn't make, I think, much sense to focus on that first tier skill. Let's see, right now we're managing to... It says we're fervent, but it also says we're at 80%. One of those is wrong. We should probably just keep building out. And start leveling stuff up soon. We'll start the public library in two turns, so I'm not too, too worried about progress on this. I guess maybe it's a better idea to build the husbandry center first. We're definitely going to flee from these dervishes as quickly as possible. Alright, let's see if we can find another fortress. It is unlikely that this is the only one in this region. Sea regions, much like land regions, often have two or three minor faction villages, effectively. We need to find the other ones as quickly as we can. What is our what is our um, empire plan going to cost with the one converted village? Twenty four. Okay. Well, I think we're going to go ahead and do that instead of if we were willing to leave our empire plan blank, we could finish the first step of our faction quest a couple turns sooner. I don't think that's worth doing. 
Yep, somebody else destroyed 10 armies. Turn 19. Definitely not a thing we could have done. And where are the minor factions out here? So there are all these weather tiles. Out on the water, there is weather. The weather moves two turns, I believe two turns, two spaces to the east every turn. Just sort of glides across the surface of the water. And at the beginning of each new season, the weather is completely regenerated. So while you're out here on the ocean, you have to be a little bit careful. As you might imagine, these lightning storms are pretty bad for us. If we end our turn on them, they will do damage to the ships. Uh, I love the way the weather effects look on the world map, but they're not always super clear. Like, there's a lot of time where these lightning tiles are not showing any indication that they are lightning tiles. If you zoom up to the uh, to this zoom level where this thing happens, the weather is extremely clear. I recommend that if you are not comfortable uh, navigating the oceans just yet. Okay, here we definitely need to prioritize the public library over this husbandry center. Maybe like that much. Let's definitely prioritize. And then uh, we're going to need some other basics. Like we need Alchemist Furnace and Empire Mint. And that'll push us up to Era 2. So maybe that's... This doesn't have us getting any luxury extractors, but we don't have any luxuries in our home region. Unfortunately, the villages in these regions out here will not gather the strategic or luxury resources of their regions until we have the right tech. So, like, it would be cool if we could get dye extraction going so that we could get the dyes out of there. One problem at a time, though. Hi. Oh, we've got, for some reason, minor faction dudes just spawning in my home region. Come on, where the hell are all the other fortresses? Sea regions can sometimes be very large. We have good vision and fast movement, but just a lot of ocean out there in the ocean. Well, we're definitely going to have to go and convert that. Oh, that's not good. Now they know about our, uh, our village over here. And unfortunately, converting this village is going to be even more expensive due to the fact that it is already destroyed. Don't think we can afford to skip out on science there. Hmm. We should probably start a fight with these minor factions. I'm just thinking this will be good XP for the hero. We definitely need to end up to level up as quickly as humanly possible. Or, I guess, humanly. As quickly as whatever he is Ali possible. Alright, so we throw a slow on that guy. And then this guy doesn't have the movement to reach the drider. And I'll just kite this dude around over here. Oh, Driders don't actually have slow. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know why I was thinking they did. You know, most support units have uh, have some of those capacities. Have you moved to here? Okay. There we go. Problem solved. No more damage for us. There we go. There's Andom behaving a little bit more the way I'm used to him behaving. He really is a fantastic combat unit. I don't know what those minor faction armies were for, but I am happy to have a little bit of bonus XP. So it's looking like we're probably not going to be able to get any, uh, any quick fortresses. I stopped on a lightning tile there due to not looking at it for long enough, so you can see we took some damage. I noticed after I had uh, spent all of our movement, but unfortunately that's too late. Over here we have some rain, which 
Increases army upkeep or in battle lowers morale. The weather effect, the weather tiles are still active during naval battles, so you have to be pretty careful about them. Okay, they rebuilt the village for us. That was nice of them. So next turn... Nope, now it says 68. That's high. Well... You know, even though we did just finish all of this, I'm wondering if it's worth it to pull some people over just to get this over with. We do want our faction quest moving along here. 68, though, huh? Is it just everybody? Uh, no, this will do it. One guy can stay on food. Well, you're not going anywhere, and... I suppose at this moment we can start working on the next burrow. We build that there, and when we pick up, um, when we pick up resource mining, it'll immediately be active. Sixty-eight is a hell of a cost. It does cost more when it's somebody else's village, I guess, and that must be what it is, right? Uh, so really, really horrible uh, units, actually. Hikators and Driders are both so bad at combat. Alright, so we now have this completed. It'll, uh, it'll pop next turn. How is there so much ocean in this ocean? <laughs> Where are all the fortresses? Oh, this, this actually goes all the way to the top of the map. Yeah, this ocean region is huge, man. I am a little a little bit caught off guard here. So we've now formally met Pink. Because when we got that guy out of his village, he appeared on the Pink side. Well, let's hope they don't see fit to attack us. You, man, I don't even know what to do with you at this point. Not much I can do. Probably don't want to just send him back into the garrison. I guess let's get, like, right along the coast here, see what we can see across the water. It might be worth it for us to try to get over here and convert villages in a place where there aren't tons of enemies. Alright, we did it. This worthy one heals quickly, but its mind remains closed. Perhaps these examples will serve to help it understand. They begin to think. This is good. They will come to us willingly, in time, or everything must be bent to the will of the cult, or be destroyed. They have seen this conversion again. What power do they have that makes others so glad to obey? Once you are converted, you never doubt or hesitate. You just follow orders, as if you enjoy it. Like dogs, wagging tails, eager to please. They will, let le they will let me leave the pit if I mouth the words and obey the orders. I'll do it, if only to find a way to save my people. As long as I still control my thoughts, I will fight for my future and the safety of my tribe. No cult or army will change that. And never one full of such strangeness dedicated to an insane cause. But I am no fool. I see the power, and power seduces. But what do they want to do with it? Destroy? Save? Rule? One day I will know. Until then, I'll watch and wait. The power of the cult begins to grow as the minor factions are converted. We need to assimilate. Hey, what a coincidence. I was just about to say we should probably assimilate a minor faction. So you can see here we have access to uh, not only our home region pacified faction, but any faction we have a village of. Plus 5% defense, plus 5 approval, or plus, five, plus half a resource every turn out of our extractor. These are all bad. Silics are, I think, of them the best. The Silics, the Silics could be better. Uh, once we have Alchemist Furnace, I think we'll start gathering glass steel here until, obviously, green destroys our village. Which, sure as you're born, they will do. However, once we can negotiate our way to peace with one of our neighbors, we can then convert stuff in their territory and they won't be able to destroy it. At that point, we'll be able to actually maintain some converted villages. Probably not until then, though. 
Hello, what do you guys want? They would like it if I would activate two wine boosters. As you arrive at the fortress, you interrupt an unusual ritual. The inhabitants are drinking and singing, celebrating their good fortune as they sit astride ancient sea trunks and chests. Sadly, they have run low on wine, and would be happy to invite you into their society if you acquire some. Uh, aren't they robots? Do they get... Can robots get drunk? Alright, so if we activate two wine boosters, we'll get this palliative prow, which is a piece of equipment for ships that gives them auto-heal, and also quite a lot of health and defense. And control of the fortress, which is obviously the real thing we're after. It looks to me like we might have some trouble getting early control of fortresses. Uh, there are ruins out on the sea as well. Unfortunately, diving to explore a sea ruin does consume all of your remaining movement points. You want to be careful about uh, how you do it. There we were able to exactly spend all of our points to move on to it, so that was nice. Alright, what else is going on here? We're building that alchemist furnace. We can definitely move people back over to food. And really just go crazy on population here. We need to we need to get big and powerful and quickly. That said, our population is actually quite good for where we are the moment we find ourselves in heresy and witchery. That's true, I have converted one of your villages. And if you know what's good for you, you'll leave it. They're not going to leave it. Hey look, we did it. Cultists wish to study ruins. Search the temple ruins with at least two level 2 minor faction units in your army. Those temple ruins, over there. You know, the ones you can't get to. I assume that this is an available path, that there's land on the other side of Pink's territory. Unfortunately, uh, because of where they built their city, we would have to run across several squares of, or several hexes of lava to get to it. So we're probably not actually even going to try this until we're in Era 2 and we have the shipyard tech. Wow, that's, uh, <laughs> that's coral, is it? Well. There's probably one more fortress here. An ocean region of this size, I would expect there to be three. But my guess is we're not, we're going to find that we are not able to take this region over through uh, pleasantries and quest accomplishment. We're probably going to have to use violence. Fortunately... That's a thing we can totally do. So, let's talk about boarding vessels. Here's the basic design of our ship. It has the boarding party trait, due to its weapon, which gives boarding party one. Uh, so it converts 30% of its remaining life to bonus damage, which means that we can increase the damage of this ship by increasing its defenses. So that's the thing we want to do. We are also, if we want to take control of this ocean region, going to have to fight some number of... Fomorian vessels, probably. So, we can equip this little engineer robot thing. Uh, originally designed to control or build Fomorians, this iron artifact is quite efficient at damaging them. So we get the Fomorian Sle uh, Slayer 3 trait, which gives us a significant damage boost. And now this ship is a hell of a lot more expensive than it used to be, but it's also way better at combat. Like, hilariously better at combat. And I think we're going to need at least a couple of these. That burrow can maybe wait a second. Yeah, probably. We gotta get these ships out. How much would it cost to buy one of them out with this design? Six uh, six hundred. Okay, well. Let us build quickly. Can we build quicklier? Yeah, actually, we can build pretty quickly. All right, let's try to get control of the ocean region. Ocean regions are really valuable, and I'm hoping to be able to show you why. I don't think we really have anything to do with our preacher. I guess for the moment, I'm just going to jab him in the city. He could be giving our, our hero a point of XP per turn by sitting in that garrison, right? So with our vessel that is out here, let's do our best to... Oh, see the Fomorian vessels. The fortresses are much like the minor faction villages in that they will, after a certain point in the game, start to spawn um, neutral ships. Uh, it is usually about the same time. It's maybe a little bit later. So the villages will usually start spawning their minor faction armies somewhere in the neighborhood of turn like 16 to 24. My impression with the fortresses is that it's maybe like a few turns later, but I guess I haven't really interacted with the fortresses in enough games to feel certain of that. 
This is going to move us up into the next era, which is good and bad. It's bad in the sense that it's going to make our units more expensive to build. Things are going to come out a little bit slower. Really not what we need right now. Our villages are under attack. Yep, so green destroyed that village trivially. There was no way we could have defended it. Uh, our minor factions here are going to level up very slowly if we don't get them out and use them in combat. I don't know exactly how we're going to do that. Uh, it's a problem for another day, I suppose. Alright, and with access to the Tier 2, or the Era 2 technologies, we got to figure out what we want to do first here. So there's obviously a lot of really good stuff available. In particular, the Nameless Guard, which will allow us to actually defend ourselves. Um, shipyard, which will let us move our guys across to where we need to do our quest. Central Market, which is fantastic for us. And we do have the tight, or we do have the glass steel necessary to build one. Uh, even more food. There's definitely an argument to be made for even more food. Science output is 51 per turn. Hmm. We're not going to be sitting at fervent until we start leveling up our districts. I think we want shipyard. The reason I think we want shipyard is we really need to search more ruins and stuff. We need to get um, some titanium going as well. But the searching the ruins might help us get the titanium going. I'm just thinking we need to... Um, we need to be able to build st strategic weapons and stuff, and fairly soon. Possible that pink could declare war on us. Remember that green can't. Um, we're just going to have to hope pink is too distracted. Maybe red, which we can see down here. We'll, uh, we'll fight them, or maybe they'll get it in their heads that they could attack green, and it will turn out not to be true. Sometimes that happens. The AI uh, sometimes underestimates roving clans and attacks them in situations where it is not safe to do so. Now listen, I've made that mistake my uh, myself. I can't say that I think it's necessarily entirely stupidity. Sometimes you try to you feel out an enemy, and it turns out that you just did not have the right of it. All right, well, that's both of our villages gone. Sadly, and there was actually nothing we could have done about that. There's no way we could have defended those against the armies that were uh, that were used to attack them. So let's just scout around a little bit while we wait for the other good ship to get built, and then we will bring our three ships together and use them to take over these fortresses. So what do we have here? Sisters of Mercy. Not not great converts, really. Come back home. So we'll give this guy a retrofit, merge up the three ships, and that should be enough, I think, to take down these fortresses. As a venerable and cautious race, rumor has it that the Dogreshi have stockpiled vast mountains of Moonleaf. Interesting. Well, I would love to assimilate the Dorgeshi. I do not think that that is an option that we have. I don't think we've seen any Dorgeshi villages anywhere. Oh, there are some up here. Interesting. Potentially a thing that actually could happen. Oh, hey, it's winter. Well, that's not great. It's not terrible, but it's not great. Apparently I accomplished a quest. Oh, yeah, I totally forgot about that. So, the first Urken has emerged. Fakir has emerged in a distant land. A land that prevents me from interacting with him. That's fine. Uh, now, one thing that's nice about having ships... And we're gonna, uh, we're gonna jump our preacher out here real quick and just scour our land for pearls real fast. Um, one thing that's nice about all these ships is that a lot of pearl deposits spawn on the water, and they're often quite large. Alright, let's see if we can conquer ourselves some fortresses. It'd be really nice if we could get to 10 pearls and get our uh, get our altar up. 
169 for the retrofit. So it looks like it might legitimately be a two fortress region. There's a little bit of space we didn't explore up here and a little bit that we didn't explore there. I'd be very surprised if it was a two fortress region. That seems unlikely. I wonder if we should prioritize getting our stronghold stronghold architecture finished. Well, for right now, let's just finish the burrow because it gets us titanium. Once we have access to the titanium, we can consider other moves. So if you're looking for pearls in your regions, uh, know that a lot of pearl deposits spawn on anomalies, so check those first. I hope this is a short winter. Well, no such luck for us. Either that or Green already robbed us. Museum of Riga was built by somebody else. A little bit of a shame. We did not have good luck with ruins this time. And I think that really hurt us. Alright, let us take the fortress by force. This should be pretty straightforward. So the, uh, the basic boarding vessels... This is all that the Fomorians will have right now, and theirs don't have the plating, so they have a lot less health than we do. Which is bad for them both offensively and defensively, remember. Okay. So, we can pin them in place. Yep, and just gang up on them. Okay, that's a pretty good start. Alright, cool. No meaningful damage. So we've now taken a, uh, taken control of a fortress, and look at all those pearls. Uh, okay, apparently I don't have enough movement to get over there. So let's talk about what a fortress actually is. A fortress is a central column, which gives you usually, like, uh, you can see down there at the bottom, an influence and a couple of science. And then there are a couple of different types of central column. This one is a listening post, so it gives extra vision and there's extra health regen for our units here. Uh, and then the uh, central column will be surrounded by a certain number of facilities, somewhere between one and three facilities, I believe. Facilities do not usually start the game revealed. It's like these are these are something that these will open up over the course of the game, uh, and they will have cool stuff in them. This one started open because it's a low-level facility that gives us titanium. So one titanium and one science every turn, as long as we hold this fortress. And you can see all of these water tiles here. These are turbulence, which reduces attack in combat, but out on the world just makes you move faster. So we can actually really take off here. Oh, and look at that. That little blob of darkness did in fact hold a, uh, hold a fortress. Well, let's go get it. Pretty bummed out about the lack of pearls in our uh, in our land. I am pretty happy though about us having some actual titanium income. All right, somebody else got the wine. It's a real shame. It's a real shame that our neighbors are the ones getting the. Uh, getting the deeds. I think we're just gonna... Hmm. Do I wanna maybe focus on Will of Achille real quick? I'm wondering if we want to go all the way up. I guess getting cold operators is pretty important. Making our, making our city immune to winter, maybe even before the second winter, would be awfully nice. I'm moving slowly here to try to take advantage of any turbulence we might come across. We can reroute ourselves dynamically. We have shipyards, so we're probably going to pull some units out of the garrison and have them go exploring. And I think Central Market might be the next the next pull. We really need science, though. We're really not producing a lot of science. All right, let's do it like that. By the time we have that research, we'll actually have the resources to build it. And I guess we'll send these two out together to reduce the odds of them getting killed. It really sucks, though, that we only got two... Both of the units we got are just horrible at fighting. 
All right, let's go have a chat with this other fortress. It could be that they'll give us a quest that we could do instead of fighting them. Ah, oh, somebody finished the Megapole already, huh? That's a little bit of a shame. Oh, hey, look. Random Minor Faction Vessel. Okay. So this is not going to be terribly interesting or useful, but I do want to point something out. You see all of this area that the battle is taking place on? We did not have actual vision of all of this space before. But now when we come out of the battle, we do. If you get into a battle near the edge of your vision, all of the tiles that are part of the battle will get immediately explored for you. You very rarely can take advantage of that, but the thing you should know. When that, when that one in a million time comes up, you'll be glad that you learned this. So what do you guys want? The Fomorians of this fortress ask not only to do their work, or sorry, ask only to do their work and live their lives. Sadly, in an environment as turbulent and violent as Auriga, they seldom get this chance. If you wish to gain them as allies, you must show your willingness to forego the tools of war. They have seen too much blood in the water. They have no great fondness for sharks. So in your next Empire plan, don't put any influence in the military ministry, set economy and population to its level 1 minimum, and you will get control of the fortress and the tier 3 titanium and glass steel armor tech, which is an awesome thing to have. The accessories that come from this are great. So we are not going to take this fortress over by force. We are going to do this quest. Unfortunately, that does mean that we have to leave the thing alive to potentially generate new neutral vessels, which I don't like. But the, the reward for getting that quest right is too powerful to ignore. All right, so what are we doing now? Well, we could just generate another ship. We could generate some military units, which might be the smart play. It's probably a good idea for us to have some military units. Let's um, let's generate two Harmonite real fast. If these guys do die out while we're out exploring, um, we can use the Harmonite to do this quest. Because uh, remember, we'll, we're building them at level two now since we are in Era Two. Our ships are super weird looking. Yeah, that's really strange. All right, I see the time. I know that we are uh, <laughs> that we have we have hit time, but I actually really would I would love to get this fortress thing resolved before the end of the episode. I don't know. We'll see how we'll see how that feels. We'll see how feasible it seems. All right, we do have another fortress to deal with. I don't I don't think I want to veer off course for two pearls. Try to route around the seaweed here. Seaweed reduces or increases the movement cost of tiles. Uh, lava does not, or lightning. Lightning does not deal damage to you if you just cross the tile. It only deals damage to you if you are there at the end of the turn. Or rather, at the beginning of the turn. I don't know exactly what the timing is. But you have to have stopped, basically. So it's important to know it does not function like lava. Cool. Of course, we got nothing out of the ruin. Why, why would we get anything out of the ruin? Well, we found some pearls. So every, uh, every time that a minor faction vessel is pumped out of here, it is a threat to our undefended fortresses. Unlike, you know, uh, cities and, and minor faction villages that we convert and stuff, the fortress will never naturally generate a garrison. So we either have to build ships for the purpose of protecting them, or we have to make sure that we seal up all of the minor faction fortresses into our faction as quickly as possible so that we don't run the risk of losing these things. Also, man, I am not happy about our dust situation. Kinda hoping that we'd be able to search some ruins and fix that. Come on, nothing? Really? Alright, well, at least we got a lot of pearls for our trouble. We'll be able to get a quest from these guys as well. Yeah, I'm very displeased about how bad the ruins have been. Okay, that's another four pearls. That's not too bad.
I guess actually the thing I should be paying attention to is these guys. We should make sure I actually move on to the spaces that have these pearls before hostile neutrals uh, can get on them and block us. Oh, somebody moved up to era 3 and upon them doing so, a bunch of facilities have revealed. So did our... aha! One of our facilities did reveal itself. It is a Moonleaf facility. Moonleaf is a pretty powerful luxury. I'm very happy to see this. So this is going to generate a Moonleaf for us every turn. And remember, we are only one city, so our booster cost is always going to be very reasonable. Alright, the Palliative Prow would also be cool to have. I don't think it's nearly as important, though. Let's just go ahead and take this over by force. Alright, there's lightning in the battlefield. we got to watch out for that. It does deal the lightning damage uh, at the end of every turn. This is a little inconvenient. Our third ship is not actually going to be able to partici participate in battle this turn. Well, we might just blow these guys up right away. Yeah, never mind. It's not going to be a problem. Okay. Now all we have to do is get that third uh, faction, or get that third thing sealed up. So over here, we have a glass steel facility and an emeralds facility. I don't really care for emeralds, but, you know, honestly, they could be meaningful for us. It's a 30% boost in the fortification of your city. If we were to get into a war with another player, we might be really glad we had that, actually. Oh, hey, look, it's Stalwarts. It's Pink has taken this region over. Not awesome. How are you guys doing? Are you going to level up anytime soon? No. Okay, we'll use the Harmonite to uh, get this thing accomplished. You know, honestly, it doesn't feel like we're in a great position to me. I don't feel like we've had an explosive start, and I kind of feel like you need one with the cult. But we're just going to keep pressing on here as best we can. These guys exhaust all their move before they do any or before we do anything. Search this sea ruin, maybe get something cool out of it. Okay, fifty dust is cool. No, can I not do that? Okay, there we go. Turn to the village when you are ready to give them a hundred dust. I am not going to do that. <laughs> Yeah, that's just not... that's not a thing I can do right now. Well, we can have these, uh, we can have these guys get into ships and search the sea ruins for us. Oh, I should have... whatever. Our... our preacher will bail out and talk to them. Please let me get this exotic armor, I want it so bad. <laughs> we are gonna get over here, though, and watch them, because I don't want them spawning, um... Hostile vessels that go after our other fortresses. Let's be aware. Okay. Build this alchemy workshop. Up out the Harmonite, because we gotta try to get over here into this uh, into this ruin as quickly as possible. I really want to put people back on food. Right, we could use the growth. But it's very difficult to justify. We have so many things that we need to build so quickly. We need to get our districts growing, and... Yeah, we just can't do that. I'm going to put the altar above the alchemy workshop, I think. We really use the extra, uh, the extra resources from the terrain. So we can't reasonably convert anything in any of these areas because we know that the other players will kill it immediately. If we can get these guys pacified, we could maybe convert all three of those villages. That would be pretty cool. It's very, very difficult to convert villages and actually hold them with the cult in my experience. But this little island off our coast might be exactly the solution we need. Come on, cool stuff. No cool stuff. Okay, they spawned... Wow, that's a very large and impressive army for this moment in the game. 
Well, somebody else assimilated the Dogeshi. Yeah, I, we have to fight them. If we don't fight them, they're just going to uncapture our fortress. So they have the second kind of boat, the fire ship. Fire ships do not do a ton of damage on contact, you see there, but they have that endless flames effect. What they do is they set your ships on fire and just let them burn down. They have more defense. What do we have attack-wise? 37. So his 38 defense doesn't necessarily mean we won't hit him for full damage. It means we probably won't hit him for damage and a half. But remember, all of our damage values are buffed by Fomorian Slayer. Yeah, I mean, we have to we have to try to kill him. Don't really have a lot of other plays available here. So the way we want to do this is by burning out his small ships immediately. And then taking on the fire ship uh, three on one. Fire ship, it, a way to think about the ships that will, uh, like, the, the analogy between the ships and the land units is that Boarding vessels are cavalry, but they're light cavalry. Fire ships are heavy infantry. So fire ships, generally speaking, will beat boarding ships, but you can you can use the same kind of tactics you use with cavalry units to swarm and bamboozle. So you're going third, actually. Hold on. You go here, you go there. How does this attack work? Deals damage to the target and opponents next to both the target and the attacker, so it hits him like an arc in front of him. He only has two movements, so he'll only be able to attack this guy. I mean, I could just attack him where he is and hold him in place. I think that's probably what we have to do. Hope for the one-shots here. Ooh, that sucks. Well, actually, hold on. We need to be a little bit careful here. Hmm. Boy, that f <laughs> that fire animation is playing as fast as possible. So if I run over, if I run over and attack this guy from right here, his counter attack is going to hit both of us, which is not great. If I am patient and let this guy move around to here before launching the attack, then we don't let him get a double attack off, but we also don't deal as much damage to him this turn, and I'm burning the whole time. Yeah, let's just do it like this. Because the, the damage he deals with the actual contact of his attack is pretty minimal. It's the fire that really hurts. Okay, so those guys are cleared out. We should be able to hold our ocean now. I'm hoping that we're going to be able to get to this without Pink even realizing that we're here. We'll see. It might be unrealistic. Here is Green running a settler over to my island. That's not good. Guys, get back on the island. We have to we have to kill this settler. Remember, no amount of, of upsetting green is going to cause them to declare war on us, because they literally can't. So that's basically Oh, hey, that was a neutral minor faction vessel just sailing past my stuff. Well, we better get down there and fix that. Okay, so we're going to get on land, and then the turn after that, we're going to be able to actually do the quest. For five turns, oh man, the Sisters of Mercy have given us a quest we can't do. Well, yeah, that's a problem. Okay, just to double check, they want economy and population ministry at level one. So that's this one. No big surprise there. Um, I think we're actually going to go pretty hard on this. Because we can totally afford to. Yeah, let's do that. We want to have some influence left over for uh, deal making and conversion. I don't know that we'll actually get a lot of benefit out of buyout reduction. Because we don't really have enough dust to do that. 
Yeah, this is fine. And no points in the, uh, no points into the military because that's part of that quest. And also because I wouldn't do it anyway. All right, let's run one more turn here. You guys down here, because you might want to do battle. Get these guys over here to defend our fortress, or we're going to lose it. We're probably going to lose it. It's not a big deal. If we lose it, we just take it back. But here's why I wanted to make sure that we got this all the way done. Oh, actually. Let's attack the settler here. Make it clear to him that he is not welcome. Why would I not include... Well, I guess I don't need them, do I? He has 30 attack, 12 defense. I'm, like, I'm trying to figure out if I think he's going to beat the preacher. Honestly, I'm a little worried about it. Nah, he'll just retreat. Okay. So yeah, here's what I wanted to talk... I want What I wanted to show. The control of this ocean region. So once you have all of the fortresses in an ocean region, you take control of it. This does a couple of things. First of all, it makes it a region owned by you. So now the rules for regions owned by me apply. Uh, for example, if we had failed to take control of this and we only had two fortresses up here, these would be fortresses in a neutral region and green would be allowed to attack them with their boarding vessels. Now that it's my region, if they want to attack my stuff in it, they have to actually declare war, which again, they cannot do. Um, another big benefit is that, and I did, it was on that pop-up that I dismissed, uh, your fortresses produce additional resources when you control the ocean region there is. You can see now it's 1.1 titanium, 1.1 moonleaf. Um, if you're not playing with ELCP, the bonus is 50% of their normal output. ELCP nerfed it a little bit because ocean regions are extremely powerful. Um, I'm still, even with the nerf, extremely happy to have this ocean region. Also, this fortress is producing palladium. That's pretty handy. We're not going to have the ability to produce that for ourselves for uh, quite some time. So yeah, are we in a good position here? Honestly, I have no idea. Or, perhaps more accurately, no, I don't think so. But, we're moving. I'm actually going to do one more turn here. I just want to make sure I get this settler. I also want to make sure I get this quest ruin search done before things go horribly awry. And then, the question... Do we just try to kill these Sisters of Mercy? Do I think I can do it with a Drider and a Kekator? The Sisters of Mercy are really bad fighters, but so are my units. We'd be much more likely to get it done with the Harmonite. Hmm. Yeah, I don't know. I think I'm not going to attack right now. Alright, so let's get into the next turn. We're going to kill this guy, we're going to get that ruin search accomplished, and then we're going to call the video. First of all, we definitely want to get our ship moving so that that minor vessel doesn't have the ability to break our ocean region, which could be disastrous. We can see that green has taken the ocean region south of us, which is a real shame. I was hoping to get... Uh, hoping to get control of the oceans before the other players were really into them. Uh-oh. Oh, I spawned. Yeah, okay. No worries. So, the minor faction fled. Hopefully green will take it out. We take our ships over here and, like, search sea ruins and explore a little bit more. Um, this ocean region is still neutral, so if there are fortresses in it, we might be able to take control of this as well. Uh, one more thing owning an ocean region does that, uh, that I forgot to mention is that it makes your trade routes running through that ocean region more valuable if you are running trade routes via the cargo dock. Um, that obviously is not going to be terribly meaningful for us since we can only have one city. Alright, we have gained the Order of Asivir. So this is a trinket that can only be equipped by cultist faction units, not our minor faction units. It gives plus 35% damage influence and our damage uh, initiative and defense it's really great, and regeneration too. Hopefully, uh, we're going to actually be able to afford to put this on some units. It is a little pricey. The worthy ones learn. There is hope. Our purpose is a constant joy. 
and they achieve what they set out to do and know so much of the old places. Though I hate them, they impress me. The worthy ones no longer fight. They look and think and ask. Soon, they will even become useful. They said they would let me lead again. I will be free in the city and even join the armies patrolling the region. Of course, they want safety and security. But now they also want to build up the city into a huge center of faith and study. Faith in what? To study what? They get angry when I ask this, so I stopped doing it. Worse yet, I have seen them. Queen, the unspoken. The coldness, the hatred, the madness that I felt made the back of my neck twitch. Can a purpose like that, a drive that intense, even be intelligent? But I am curious to know what's beneath the strange machines they wear like skin. If I know that, maybe I'll know why they seek to study and under or what they seek to study and understand, and why. The Queen and the Unspoken require a greater center of worship. We must assign a cultist hero to the city for ten turns. Well, something tells me this won't be too difficult. You know, we're making reasonable progress down our faction quest here. Uh, so we also started the conflict resolution quest. We do not right now have the military strength to, to defeat either of these armies, unfortunately. You just need to get back in the water. Ugh, these guys spawned in places that are making it very awkward for me to get back, uh, get back to safety. All right, we'll do that at the beginning of next turn. So our, our, our Silix should escape safely. We should be able to make it over here and clear out this Sisters of Mercy village and then hopefully get a better quest from the others. And obviously this goes the way it's going. What a surprise, Settler's dead. This is neutral territory. No one is allowed to live here. And then... I think we probably want to start on another burrow. So when we put down this burrow, we're going to get our first level up. So at this point, we're building um, approval positive. We don't actually need the central market for the moment. Uh, thanks to the Empire Plan. I don't want to have to buy that Empire Plan all the time. So we'll want to finish the central market before turn 60. But it's not like crucial right now. It's so not crucial right now that maybe we want to pick something else up instead of finishing it. I don't know. I guess this is a decision that can be made next time. Because now I should definitely end the episode. Uh, that is going to be it for us for today. Thank you all so much for watching. Come back next time to see if we can turn what I think is a pretty okay start here into some kind of victory. And we'll see you then.